If I had a dime for every time someone said the pandemic would change retail forever, I would be richer than if I'd hit the jackpot. Not that I deny the impact of COVID on retail. In fact, there are many things that will be changed for good. Marketplaces like Amazon gained many new customers around the world. Curbside and contactless deliveries have become commonplace. And in the case of the latter, curbside became an easy way for physical stores to avoid an expensive retrofit for buy online pickup in store without a drive through window. And much of the e-commerce growth was actually in curbside pickup, which also helped a lot of retailers stay afloat. And that's, of course, not all. More people are paying with touchless payments, they're ordering just about everything online, and they're pre-shopping on e-commerce websites before going to stores. Now, retail is a huge industry, one of the biggest in the entire world. And while it didn't get a ton of attention, total spend, especially in markets like the US during the pandemic, was actually higher than ever before. But most of those gains happened because people spent more at a few types of retailers, essential goods, e-commerce, and some lucky luxury brands. And everyone else, well, they were left behind. One could argue that retail just found itself in a bad stretch, or a particularly good one if you happen to be a grocer, because it wasn't too long ago that we thought restaurants were the future and grocers were challenged. So let's acknowledge this. Even after the pandemic is done, there are problems that every sector needs to address because volatility is something we will be destined to face. This likely won't be the last pandemic of our lifetimes, the stock market won't go up forever, and there will be more natural disasters every year. So let's examine the current state of retail. Many of the truisms, the orthodoxies of today, came from principles that worked in, say, the 1980s or 90s, but now really need to be rethought as demand can fluctuate and competition in the retail industry is higher than ever. I see three big problems. The first, retail supply chains are slow and inflexible and very vulnerable to workers who may not be able to work because maybe they're in the middle of a pandemic and can't even come to work, or to other unexpected issues like a ship being stuck in the Suez Canal, which by the way, may be more common in the future because these container ships are bigger than ever. Why? Because in the last few decades, there's been consolidation. When there's a shortage of anything, it's months or years to source product and produce them at a higher level. Another challenge in the retail industry is the cost of hourly labor. Store associates, warehouse workers, and now drivers. Even though we have a truck driver shortage in the US and where more laborers relieve themselves in bottles and bags and they get spied on too, being a store worker is a tough sell. Not to mention that there's a growing gulf between the rich and poor. And given that so many of the poor are in retail jobs, there's a very fair question that seems to resonate with lots of people. Are these businesses indirectly subsidized by the government and taxpayers? Third, retail has also had an outdated inventory model where lots of cash is spent up front to buy products that never get sold. And that inventory then gets housed in stores with really long leases that retailers no longer need. You've heard how often the U.S. is overstored, and that is one thing the pandemic hasn't changed. Is it any wonder journalists were talking about an apocalypse years before the pandemic? If you look at bankruptcies, 2020 actually made the last few years look good. But now, retail needs a reboot serious self-reflection, and fundamental changes. Or companies just won't be competitive with established behemoths or small upstarts funded by ambitious investors looking to disrupt them. Get ready for solutions like this to consume a lot of oxygen in the coming months. And even in other categories, have you even heard of these companies? 
They're using Instagram to gain awareness and build a brand. They often have outside investments and they are looking to disrupt incumbents. And retailers are still obsessed with faster shipping and delivery. They need to be obsessed with shoppers churning away from them and trying new things. And even with their own core products, the truth is that people would rather just save money and know where things are, like at which local store, in real time. And consumers want to be able to manage their own pickups. So let's talk about what the retail industry needs to do to future-proof itself. First, let's talk about fixing our supply chain. One big outcome of the pandemic has been the diversification of suppliers. Yes, this is much more expensive than just having everything in one low-cost country, but things are changing anyway. There's a huge question of whether we should be manufacturing closer to the region where purchases are made anyway. The cost of manufacturing in Mexico, for instance, which is in the red line here, and the speed of delivery, actually makes a move away from Asia really interesting. Why there isn't more movement in both Mexico and the US to something more efficient is something that everyone, including business executives and governments, need to start talking about. Remember, people are constantly buying new things anyway. Mega brands will be fewer and fewer in the future. Every brand will likely have less market share. Build your supply chain for smaller batches and be flexible enough so that you are in a place that prospective competitors come to for manufacturing so you can get an early read on what could be trending. Now, moving any part of a factory to the US is almost a non-starter, but maybe it shouldn't be. As much as we worry about automation, there may be some places where it makes sense and the trade-off is more manual work that's slower overseas or automated work with fewer employees in your own home country. That's actually how BMW manages to have manufacturing in Munich, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world and one of the most heavily unionized in the world. Are there similar sectors where the same thing makes sense in other regions? For some sectors, the solution is 3D printing on demand for some types of items. Customization is the modus operandi of the entire pizza industry, but yet we haven't thought of 3D like a more sophisticated version of, say, Papa John's, but maybe we should? Another issue in supply chain we need to grapple with is the change in unit economics that will likely come from ESG, environmental, social, and governance requirements. We do also need to grapple with the bigger question of waste, overconsumption, and the environmental impact of all that we consume. ESG issues are becoming increasingly crucial, led in particular by European investors, but with even US companies now being pushed into those same standards, the costs of production will likely increase, which will reduce the purchase cycles of some products. What's interesting is that what governments refuse to do, investors are forcing. I wanna spend a few minutes talking about AI, artificial intelligence, because it's often seen as a silver bullet. Let's step back and look at retail. There are three parts of almost every type of retailer. There's consumer facing parts of their business, there's store associate and field worker facing sections, and then there's back office facing sections. Where the biggest benefits are is not in the buzzy investments, but in a lot of the boring back office functions that are just really important for taking the most menial tasks and letting people then spend time figuring out more creative ways to take on competition. The second thing the retail industry needs to grapple with is fixing its labor issues and finding a new generation of blue collar jobs to replace the other ones displaced by automation or fewer stores. Can ESG needs help to shift some of those jobs? For all the companies now accepting old clothes, for instance, who sorts through them, decides what to resell and what to repurpose? There's a lot of plastic we don't recycle because it's too dirty. 
Should we have people or machines cleaning that plastic and reconstituting it? Can we help more things avoid landfills? And there isn't any automation to address any of this now, but rather creative people willing to do things that haven't really been done in jobs before. Does it make sense to think about new labor models like sharing labor pools across different retailers? There are some firms that enable this and companies willing to embrace this. As an example, was in Germany during the pandemic when Aldi took on some McDonald's workers. Should we consider centralized call centers, remote customer service? They enable faster service and higher quality while still preserving jobs. And finally, inventory models in stores, having flexible places to pick items from. This helps retailers be more likely to actually sell out through drops and limited items and dynamic pricing that varies with demand. Those are strategies that retailers don't use enough. And while gouging, price gouging isn't legal, there are still variances in pricing that are allowed and even that isn't something that retailers often employ. But there's a change happening and that is the shift in who is selling. More brands, wholesale brand manufacturers are selling directly to consumers and they will likely be the future. So partnering with them as supply chains shift is more important than ever. We now have better ways to identify trends too. And if you want to invest in AI, don't think as much about cashierless stores, but rather for the things that help you take advantage of data that's out there to improve what you offer. The big change over the next decade may be changes to where products are stored and who stores them. There are a whole slew of companies that call themselves the Airbnbs of warehouses. How do we address the disruption that all this can bring? New business models, of course. Retailers as landlords, new adjacent businesses, and coalition loyalty programs. Marketplaces are rogue operators without governance. Is it time to put some parameters around them too? They've grown rapidly, but also have a lot of gray market and even counterfeit inventory. 87% of marketplace sellers think that gray market goods are a problem on marketplaces. And 70% think that counterfeit goods are a problem on marketplaces. Let's also look to reduce the negative externalities of e-commerce, like clustered pickup points as a solution. Let's look at opportunities around regulation and changes to how things are happening now. For stores that want to preserve their traffic and get trucks through their own supply chains, is it that bad that services like the USPS want to increase package prices? To summarize, there are five things that we need to do to address the disruptions in retail. One, rethink new solutions to retail supply chains that enable more nimbleness. Two, recognize that labor in the future will be held accountable to ESG rules and will also require creativity to support workers. Three, new inventory models mean that stores do not need to allocate as much working capital to what's in a store. Four, new monetization models that take advantage of retailer brands can help to fund investments in the future. And five, Brands need to recognize opportunities to sell through direct-to-consumer operations and to take advantage of technologies that help them to do so cost-effectively. So thank you and good luck in your own supply chain journeys.